Hey yo, how's it going everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today we're going to be doing a requested video on the latest build for Gold Paladins, the Planet Isa build. And this build is slightly different than what people would expect. You know, if it's a Polaris build, you probably play four Polaris. If it's the end, you probably play four the ends. If it's PBD, you probably play four PBDs. Of course you do. But this disc is slightly, slightly, ever so slightly different than the norm. Um, and the list that I am playing is roughly the same as the one that Yuzume played in the uh, Carve Vanguard Championship 2020 Summer uh, Top 4. He got third place. And I found the list very, very interesting. And I really wanted to test why. Why did they decide to go with such a unique approach? Um, with you know, just something so out of the norm. So I guess without further ado, if you are interested in understanding more about my thoughts on the list and how I changed it to fit the current meta, let's let's go and let's get started with it. So let's check out the list right here. Let's start with you know the usual, right? We're gonna play four PGs. We're gonna play four self damagers. Self-damagers are important because all of your grade threes require at least limit break four. Of course, Platinum requires ultimate break, limit break five, um, conditional limit break four, and the Disciple of Pain lets you actually hit those damage counts to actually use the triggers, uh, trigger the skills. Uh, and as we all know, Blondie Zul's limit break is insane. And having Platinum's early means you have stronger board as well as extra crit pressure, uh, very consistent. Um, and the, another reason why we play the Disciple of Pain is that it is, you know, self-damaging. It means that when you use it, you can play more aggressively. You can aggressively check heal triggers. You can deny your opponent's heal triggers. Um, and you can also manipulate the damage zone to return cards that you want from the damage zone back to the deck. Um, if you are interested in learning more about that, do check out my How to Properly Use Self-Damagers video. I think it's very important to know. Um, lots of people use the term, you know, limit break enabler. And yes, it does enable limit break but there are other uses of it too. There's a reason why there's a card that says LB4 skills are active, active all game. There's an actual limit break enabler, and this is a self damage. There, there's a difference. So something to know. Uh, what else is very common? We're playing the Gareth, 8K at two, helps you hit numbers. And we're not playing four because we're not playing the right chain. So I think that's self-explanatory. If you are playing the right chain, play four. And uh, what else can we start with? We're playing three Dendrakes. Thin Drain is when plays from next to last one, draw one. Uh, very nice way to plus. Uh, and I will explain why we're playing this, this card particularly. But in general, it just helps you build up your card advantage, help you draw cards, and you're superior calling a lot anyways. Um, your main ride target is easel after all. And so having superior calling did drain so last one to plus one when you aren't really using the soul, definitely a very great card. For the way two slot, we're playing a lot of the spirits. Spirits are great, you know, on place, kind of plus one, retire one. Uh, but we're playing more Blaster Blades than Blaster Darks. Um, personally, I'm more of a fan of Blaster Dark because Shadow Paladin is, is my main clan. But in this case, Blaster Blade is just better. The reason why is because its skill is on place, kind of plus one to retire one of your opponents, front row, grade two or greater favorites. And Blaster Dark says front row grade two or below. Uh, what are the odds of having you know, a grade? Okay, let's say grade twos. You know, they're they're both retireable with Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark. But the odds of having a grade three in your opponent's front row is higher, generally speaking, with with most builds. So you'll be seeing more grade threes in the front row than grade ones in the front row. And so in terms of utility wise, Blaster Blade is just more flexible, and you have more retire targets. And also grade threes generally have a higher base attack, base stats. And so retiring them can be more beneficial um, than retiring grade one since you can hit into them easier. Anyways, and definitely a great way to, to deal with 11k pesky grade threes. But generally speaking, you're dealing with the intercepts, so you have more uh, multi-attacking options to your opponent's uh, vanguard. So play four of the blaster blades, three of the blaster darks. Um, generally, you'd play you know four blaster blades, one, two, three blaster darks. Playing four is, is a bit too much, but you can still test with it. Um, definitely interesting to see what you find. We're playing four Mage of Calamity Trips. Trip is a very important card. You definitely should play it at 
at least two, maybe three, probably four. When its attack hits your opponent's vanguard, counter charge one and flip one damage. And this means that you can then use your easel or other counter blast skills more frequently. And uh, since a lot of these skills are counter blast one, but of course, if you use easel, for example, to call out a spirit, that's essentially counter blast two. Um, and you know, that's quite a hefty cost as you can't use it every single turn, but trip basically helps you balance that out. If you superior call trip with easel skill and you hit with trip, you basically got a free trip out of nowhere. Add extra 9k onto your easel. Banger. Next, we're playing two Master of Pain. Similar to the Disciple of Pain, Master of Pain does the same thing. It self damages you. Um, and we're playing this at two because the grade two slot is just so crowded. It has so many great cards, you know. You could play up to eight spirits. You want to play your own flippers. So unfortunately, the Master of Pain um, only has two slots. I have been testing with some 9 plus 3s or bow mains, the vanilla 10k. Um, honestly, the Master of Pain lets you have a more flexible early game. If you are put to 2 or 3, sometimes you do want to play you know, multiple self damagers to go into your easel engine much earlier um, and definitely does help. Next, for the grade 3s, we're playing 4 easels. Easel is great. Skill, kind of last 1, check the top 4 cards, superior call 1, and then it gets the power of that unit that you superior called. During your turn, you get plus 1k for each of your rearguards. So um, even if you don't use the skill, it will definitely hit you know, at least you know 11 plus 5 if you have 5 rearguards. And the boosters will probably hit over 21 or 23. Hit over those cross right numbers, definitely very good. We play 4 Pelnor. Pelnor's skill is uh, limit break 4. When it attacks, you can put a rearguard to the bottom of the deck to have 2 of your units get plus 5. Um, this, generally, you're using it less. Um, but if you have a lot of triggers in your hand, well, you can put it back to the deck. Um, and then, well, you get you get to power up your front row, your units to hit over numbers. So definitely still a viable Vanguard option. And you're going to ride this primarily through superior riding when this card is placed from your deck. If your opponent's grade 2 or above, um, you can put this onto your Vanguard circle as stand. It gets plus 5 plus 1 crit. Um, yes, we're not playing cards like, um, like Vivian, for example, that's in on battle face superior calling. So you can't multi-attack it with Pelnor, unfortunately, but generally speaking, you do, you can superior call Pelnor through many other outlets, and sometimes you do want to superior call it to guarantee that crit pressure to force LPGs or win off the game uh, when you are in the early game or the late game, depending on the situation that, that arises. Next, we're playing four Chrome Jailer Dragons. Chrome Jailer Dragon is a very wicked boy. Uh, it skills limit break four, once per turn, retire two reverts to get plus 10 plus one crit. Again, another option to get crit pressure, very nice. It's Vanguard skill, non limit break, Persona Blast to check top four and call two out. So again, this is another way to call out Palinor. Sometimes it's early game, sometimes you don't have access to limit break, but you still want the crit pressure or the um, or the power. And so you can go superior call Palinor, superior ride, and then go for it. Um, and lastly, we're playing one planet easel. And this is this is something that um, Uzume brought out that, that was kind of surprising for me because I'm not very, very into Gold Paladin. So I'm not very in touch with everything. But you know, usually you'd assume, oh yeah, four of the base unit, you know, four base easel, four cross ride, and then four supporting unit, and then one one off, right? But in this deck, we play one planet easel. And the reason I believe is because number break five, well, it's very late into the game. Um, yes, you're powering your, your board, but it's generally more of a win more board situation. You get one extra crit, but you have other outlets to do that. And cross ride, well, if you do need to cross ride to reach the uh, to reach the 13k base and reach the platinum, it means that you're at least on your fourth turn. And if you're on your fourth turn and you do want to, you know, like use the skill, um, generally speaking, it, you you should be close to winning already. Um, yes, it means that you can activate the skill at number four, you can apply more crit pressure, but most of the time you'd rather just stay on easel and plus, um, and you have other outlets for crit pressure anyways. So not the most must cross run on turn four card. Um, you know, other clans like, you know, the end, you know, Kagero, the end, um, or Dungri Unlimited, these cards want to be ridden immediately after the original. You know, but Planet Easel, not really. You keep it in your hand, you can play it when you set up your board properly, you can play it when you need the crit pressure properly, and definitely um, can be considered as a one-off. I know this is slightly controversial, but the deck did work, and I definitely do feel like this deck is is working how it's intended to be. Planet is more of like an extra, a win more card, um, rather than uh, a winning image, so to speak.
And lastly, we play the little fighter Tron, the Great Researcher. Here must one checked out five and Great Return. So a few things I would like to begin talking about. Why are we not playing the Easel Star? Yes, it's 5k. Yes, it's rare instead of common, but it forces you to search for an easel. And so far, the only easels that we have in this game is, you know, Blonde Easel and Planet Easel. Um, both of them are grade threes anyways. So why not play a little, about little Fighter Tron, you know? Like if you miss um, Easel, well, that's eight out of 13, right? But Little Fighter Tron search targets is 13 out of um, 13 out of 13, right? Instead of eight out of what, 39? It's 13 out of 39. So you honestly have, you know, one and third chance of searching for something rather than less than one and thirds. And also, well, you're gonna mulligan for away your grade threes, generally speaking. So yeah, I think Little Fighter Tron is definitely more flexible in, in, in that regard. Yes, you're losing that 1k, um, but definitely, you know, if you do need it as a booster, well, it's there, it's not really that important, and you're generally gonna be using it to search for grade three blondies more consistently anyways. Um, and this deck plays four Chrome Jailer. Um, so, you know, even if you do add a Chrome Jailer to your hand, well, Chrome Jailer can be activated in the early game, right? So that way you can still use a Persona Blast to plus, and you're not that, you know, it doesn't really hurt to draw into it. Uh, next is, why do we play four draws, five stands, right? And originally, Uzume's list plays nine stands, and that was really, I was like, whoa, nine stands, that's crazy. Like, no, no list that topped actually played that, right? That distribution. And the reason why is because, well, you have Easel that pluses for you anyways. You have cards like, you have cards like Dindre that lets you plus add cards to your hand when you when you place it so card draw definitely isn't a huge issue i mean even chrome jailer right if you write chrome jailer you can personal blast and, and call two so card advantage is definitely not a big problem with gold paladin especially since this deck is supposed to be more aggressive you know you expand your board play your spurs break your opponent's board and go face next it's because well in terms of crit pressure you have that you have that you have crit pressure through Palomar, you have crit pressure through Comb Jailo, you have crit pressure through Platinum. That's 9 out of 13 grade threes that can actually get an extra crit. So playing 9 crit isn't actually that necessary. Sometimes you get the extra crit from Comb Jailer, and then you check a crit and your opponent PGs anyways, right? Or you play Platinum and your opponent PGs anyway. So that extra crit doesn't really come in handy too much. Um, so that's why that's why he decided to play Stance. And Stance definitely isn't, you know, the best trigger i'd say it isn't the best it doesn't really work very well in the early game but in the late game when you're retiring your opponent's board when your vanguard is crit pressure your reverse can actually hit numbers um the stance definitely do come in handy uh, the deck has draw power the deck has crit power it doesn't have multi-attacking and that's exactly why uzume decided to play stance that's my interpretation of course i wish i could talk to him because that is a very fun list but that's something that i want to bring up um one last thing is because we're playing in the BT, uh, the set 8 meta, we're playing 4 of the old Halo Shield marks, which means our limit break is going to be less active than more. And that's why um, Uzume can afford to play 9 stands because he knows that a limit break can be activated earlier on into the game. Right? The opponent can't damage the map. We don't have that luxury. So that's why I still play 4 draws because just in case we don't hit the blonde easel, well, at least when I check the blonde easel and I miss the blonde easel, I still get to get an extra card into my hand to, to help me supplement with the card advantage or that I, I should have been having. And yeah, I think that's basically it. The deck does lose out in terms of the aggressiveness late game because we're not playing as much stance, but it's more stable with the four draws. And I definitely think this is the way to go for now. So I guess without further ado, let's begin with a fight and see how this goes in action. So I mean, generally speaking, for your mulligan, you're gonna be looking for the 8k or the self-damager, I suppose. You'd rather have the Din Drain in your deck than in your hand. Um, and then you're gonna toss out all the great threes except Blonde Easel because that is your primary right target. Um, and even if you don't have it, then you can still search with starter. Um, with the grade two, if you do have to mulligan all your grade threes away, then you prefer to keep trip. Um, but here we do have the Blaster Dark Spirit, which is a nice 10k body as a banger. Um, so let's just do that. We do have the Blonde Diesel, that's excellent, which means we don't have to use the starter. Um, and also in terms of the placement, in terms of the starter, generally speaking, it's going to be behind your Vanguard. Um, and the reason why is because 
Yes, with stack triggers, you do want to set up your rear guard columns, you know, more concretely than your vanguard columns because your rear guard needs to, your front rear guard generally needs to restand with a booster of fixed numbers. While if you're playing a crit variant, you do want to focus on your center lane because that's the column that's going to attack last to your opponent's vanguard. Um, the 4k boot body doesn't really help you hit over numbers necessarily, especially if you're boosting grade twos. And it does help Easel actually hit numbers um, because Easel still has the passive 1k for each gold paladin unit on your board. Um, so, for example, if you have four units, including the Tron, well, that's 11 plus 4 plus 4, so that's still 19, and still definitely hits over that 18k cross line number. Here, we're gonna ride the 10k. We're not gonna use the starter, but we can play more aggressively with the Blaster of Spirit on the board. And this attack pattern, while the sand trigger does, isn't that effective. Um, if we do, we, it still permits us to hit a heal effectively and um, set the, you know, set the pace by playing more aggressively and playing more opponents too. And even if our opponent does ride Blaster Dark and Caramelized too, that's not a big deal. Spirit is, you know, whatever something touches it, it dies. It's a ghost. Ooh, and uh, the starter, you know, four K, pretty useless if you already have the easel anyways. Something to note is that Gold Paladin is a very aggressive deck, um, and the way the deck functions, you know, some decks is like you know, gradually build up. Um, for example, Spike Brothers, you know, you can play how, how we, however you play it. Most of your power power plays are near the end, right? With Dudley Emperor multi attacking, um, with Easel and Gold, it's it's more like a little like curve. You can play aggressively, you lose advantage, you can plus back with easel, you lose, and then you can end the game with platinum or more easel plays. So being able to accept that there are very many fluctuations during your game, you might lose your entire board, especially since your board is quite flex uh, quite um, vulnerable, like the spirits. Um, if you're comfortable with that type of play, uh, putting yourself at higher damage earlier on so you can enable your easel plays. Uh, then maybe this deck is, is more suited for you. More me, I like more consistent decks, so I don't really vibe well, particularly with gold paladins. Um, but it is definitely a very solid deck, and there's a reason why it's tier one. Here one superior called the Din Drain. I love that here. It's a superior called Din Drain, which means that we can use our soul that we don't use for any other card other than Din Drain to draw a card. Another self damager, very cool. Another blonde Ezo play. It's a period called the Spirit. And we're gonna call the Dark Spirit again because the Blaster Blade Spirit has more utility. And I'd rather keep that for later. So let's just kill whatever. Yeah. With the superior call combo, you can count us to an entire anything. We're gonna call out the self damager as well, the cycle plane. And the reason why is because in the damage zone we have three triggers. Since everything is counterblasted, if I play this uh, with, without the disciple uh disciple plane. Um, the odds of returning a trigger is three out of four, but with the disciple of pain, it's uh, it's it's what what is it? Three out of four, but now it's four out of five. Um, so I I personally think that's that's uh, that's better. Here we're gonna attack with ten k first, and then the fourteen. The reason why is because with the ten k, um, if I do hit the stand trigger, it'll become a twenty one k column, and definitely will probably hit our opponent's numbers, assuming our opponent doesn't hit the trigger. And if it does, then all we need to do is hit another trigger. So here we can draw, and then if we can stand, it doesn't matter what our opponent you know, hits, but unfortunately we didn't. Um, but yeah, it is an option. So now we return two triggers, I mean, we, two, two cards, a trip, and Chrome, Chrome, Chrome Jailer. So yeah, definitely useful. Um, and you know, again, there's a reason why this is a self damage and not a lemon break anymore, because there's literally a card that is meant to enable lemon break. This card lets you borrow damage, uh, not only to enable your limit break, but to shut down your opponent's skill triggers and enable your own skill triggers. So, so that's just something that I need, I need people to understand. Please, please, please. Call. Into car. Into car. Into car. The main. Okay, okay. So yeah. Um, a lot of people tilt when this happens. I personally wouldn't. Um, it's like, oh, well, your superior call the heal trigger. At least you get to plus with the car. Three plus one on place, by the way. 
Um, and yes, sometimes you do want to heal heal instead of you know superior call one, but you really can't complain with advantage either way. And uh, it is a card that's meant to support your deck. You know, if you put a if you put a draw on car and like a heal on PBO or PBD, it makes less sense. Your ride chain lets you get into PBD, and you don't want it as your first ride. Do you really want to ride a heal trigger? Uh, and if you put it on PBO, I think that's slightly more logical than putting it on PBD. But you're persona blasting a heal trigger, right? Are you actively drawing into your PBO? If you do want that crit pressure, hmm, I don't know. So yeah, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of people swearing that you know, putting putting draw triggers on car or putting heal triggers on any other unit other than car. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's our turn. We're gonna use easel. And not only does Easel Superior Call, it filters your deck away from cards that you don't want to see and sets your deck up with you know, triggers and PGs and stuff that you don't want to spear your call, right? So very nice way to, to do that. Um, again, we self-damage, and this means that right now we have three out of five cards that we want to return to the deck, one PG and two triggers, so that's very nice. And we're going to call it the trip. And because we're playing stand triggers, because we're not playing crit triggers, we have the luxury of doing this, Vanguard to Reaver. Right? If you're playing crit triggers, your Vanguard must attack, or should attack your opponent's Vanguard, or else if you do hit a crit trigger, then you're wasting that critical, right? But here, because we're playing you know, not a crit build, uh, no crits at all, it means that we're comfortable with letting our Reaver column be the one that hits our opponent's Vanguard. And that means even if the trip column is weak, we can still guarantee that. It's unfortunately, um, I don't know if this is a bug or something, right now the unflip, you know, Priority is the one at the very front, you know, the latest damage. Um, but I guess that's how it works now, so that's something to consider. Um, so yeah. Uh, so something that happened just now is that we basically just in increased the odds of returning a trigger from 2 out of 5 to 2 out of 4, so 50% chance, and they do did go back to the deck, shuffle the deck. So that's very nice. That's very nice to have a trigger extra, extra trigger back to the deck. And yeah, another positive of the self damage. The opponent does use the PBD, eliminates uh, the intercept, so they can go face and go for lethal. Fortunately, we do have a PG in our hand to stop that. Our opponent has four cards in their hand, zero PGs shown yet, but they've shown three heal triggers, you know, the card to card to card combo. Very nice combo. Um, we did draw into another PG, so that's another safety net that we see. Um, this is very late into the game. Let's just use. Long easel, superior call something, filter through the deck. We're gonna get the other one honestly doesn't matter at this point. The trip trip I guess is nicer. If it hits, our opponent hits a heal, at least the trip unflips the damage or something. Alright, let's just go. 15 to face. PG. 16 to face. Vanguard hits last because we we still hit 29, right? So even if your opponent does hit a heal trigger here. Uh, at least the Vanguard is still gonna still gonna reach it in the end of the game because it's their last heal trigger. We we do hit a heal trigger, but since we're at four, it doesn't prop. If we did play out the self damage, it would have um, and and swung the game, you know, another way. But since we're winning, it it uh, matters less. Our opponent does have three PGs, and probably because the last card is a PG, um, they pushed up the the count to to the front row. Um, and yeah. Called the PBD, the PBD was the card that they drew, um, and they basically conceded. Yeah, so let's let's just show that the last card is a PG. And even if it's not, it means that we win. Um, and our opponent did concede. So there's that. I guess, yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice win, solid clean, very nice. Um, overall, your winning image is still easel, still easel. But don't tunnel vision, because now you have more options. You have more crit options in terms of the Pelnor, the Chrome Jailer, and the Platina, and you have more uh, retire options with the Spirits. So the deck is definitely much more complete. You know, it's a full canvas, you know, different colors right now, um, and definitely yeah. Uh, one thing to note is that it is a very free to play friendly deck. If you do want to play the four ESO four Platina build, I really highly recommend you play the Superior Ride Chain, um, since you are going to go for ESO first ride. You have an engine to do that. I'm not just hope to draw into it. 
um, you will more consistently get into the platinum cross ride and so you can do um, platinum stuff earlier on uh, mid game late game um, and apply that trip pressure um, and because of the superior ride your deck is much more aggressive and you know, it's 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 the more optimal build in my opinion with the 4 4 uh, Uzo setup so I guess that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my take of Uzume's deck for this meta. Of course, there are things that have to change because we're not playing in the Break Ride era, we're playing in the uh, last of the Asia Circuit era. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment down below, let me know uh, which deck has been working with you the best, right? I know a lot of you pulled really, really well. I know a lot of you didn't pull as well. Um, I'm very happy for all of you that pulled well. Um, and it is really unfortunate that some of us, like myself included, did pull the best. But we're going to play with the hand that we're dealt. Keep our happy faces up. And I will see you all next time. Bye.